Hello everyone, back to you in today's video, we're going to do the Sunday Roundup. In today's video, we're going to have a look at uh, the winter reanalysis, the winter of 2016-17. Um, uh, um, and then we'll uh, compare that to the analogues that we had at the start of the season. We'll also have a look at the Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation, uh, what's happening with solar activity, all of the things that we always uh, look at on a Sunday morning. But before you go on with all of that, just to say uh, about the ads, so there's video ads on those pages, say, oh no, God, Content, you watch them, they, they be closed back up again. You can close it back up again yourself, uh, and it does help to pay the gas web. It's thanks very much for doing that. Really wet morning uh, across England and Wales this morning. Band of heavy rain is uh, currently stretched out through northern England, going down into Lincolnshire and East Anglia. It is clearing from the south. Uh, however, we have got these heavy showers, uh, and they'll be sort of banding together through the course of this afternoon, producing some big downpour. Scotland's going to get the best of it today. It's a bit showery up at the moment, but those showers should clear away. I mean, a fair amount of dry weather coming up in the north. There'll be plenty of showers in the south, and windy as well. Wind's going to really get up uh, along the south coast. So, we've got the uh, reanalysis now for the winter. I'm actually going to verify the uh, winter 16-17 forecast later on this week. Probably be on Friday. Um, but we have got reanalysis in terms of the 500 mm height anomalies for the winter uh, now. So, just very quickly to talk you through uh, how things panned out. This is how uh, December panned out. It's very anticyclonic uh, month. A big area of above average heights sitting around the northwest of Europe. All of the cold air is going down into the east and the southeast of Europe via that trough. So from Russia down into southeastern Europe, that's where the cold weather was uh, in December. January looks like this. The above average height shifted a little bit to be centred more slightly to the northwest of the country. And they have this very deep trough uh, extending through uh, the Med. So we was very, very close to being uh, cold in January, but just not quite right. The cold was really going down through most of Europe, and we know that the Mediterranean was unusually cold and wet down there, and it caused problems, of course, in Spain um, for the uh, vegetables and uh, the fruit down in the south of Spain. We was really close to it. All we had to do was take that ridge just a little bit further north if we centred it more there as opposed to there then we would have been properly in that cold air, but just, just on the periphery of the cold weather in January. And then February came out like this in terms of the 500 millibar high dominance, a more unsettled month, a month, a weak trough out to the west, and the ridge, of course, uh, was then going into central and east parts of Europe. So a very different pattern uh, for February compared to the other two months, which were uh, closer. Um, Jetson going something like that. Generally a milder month, not just for the UK, but for all parts of Europe, really coming out with a milder month. It was a little bit more unsettled for the UK. Uh, in terms of the winter overall, this is the 500 millibar height on the fuller winter, of 2016-2017, it was a very anti-cyclonic, uh, very anti-cyclonic winter indeed, uh, with above average heights centred around ever so slightly to our east, all of the cold air in the east and the southeast of Europe, and this ridge keeps us generally just very quiet and settled. So in many ways, it was a uh, frustrating winter because it was on the edges of the cold, um, and it was also quite a boring winter, not a lot uh, going on until things livened up a little bit in February. Uh, so this was the um, analogue that we was working with for the winter of 2016-2017. Um, not all that far from what happened in January. You know, it's January, and the winter analogue fairly close with the ridge out to the northwest, the trough to the south and the flow going through like that. What happened, of course, is that this ridge was further south. So instead of the ridge in the analogue being centred there, the ridge was actually centred around here, which took the coldest of the air down in the southeastern and southern parts of Europe. Um, so not all that far away, but uh, clearly the ridge was further south and the trough was further south, so consequently the cold air was uh, further south as well. And the winter, when we did the analogues in the winter updates, the one winter that we focused on quite a lot was 2005, 2006, because it always looked like a fairly close match uh, for this winter. 
And uh, this was the 500 millibar high dummy for 2005. 2006. You notice again, very anticyclonic winter. This time, the anticyclone was centered more to our north northeast, um, trough through the Mediterranean, and the flow going something uh, like that. I don't think the winter that's just gone, if we go back and uh, compare, this is the 500 bit of our high dominant wind just gone. This is the latest one. Uh, this is one for 2005, 2006. Don't think they're all that far away, to be honest. Um, but of course, again, not quite. Uh, right with the uh, centre of the ridge. The ridge is being centred up here in 2005-2006, whereas the wind's just got on 2016-17 centering the, ri uh, the ridge around there. You'll never get an exact like-for-like -like match, or very rarely will you get an exact like-for-like -like match when you do these uh, analogues. So, um, broadly, I think 05-06 was, was kind of a match for what's happened in 2016-2017. Um, not identical, but I think that's probably the closest that get. Maybe 91, 92 as well, which I haven't got the uh, analogue for, 91, 92. But I would suspect that would come out very, very close to uh, the winter that's just gone. We've already established that it is an unusual combination to get uh, mild and dry in the winter. Normally, if it's mild, it'll be wet, and if it's cold, it will be dry. So we have had a very unusual winter uh, indeed. Uh, and in terms of uh, how the uh, two solar cycles are matching up with the um, with the temperatures uh, of the uh, solar cycle 12 and solar cycle 24, you just watch your winter updates, you'll know all about this. I don't really have time to go through the whole scenario now, but the idea was that the um, solar cycle of number, uh, solar cycle number 12, the winters through that solar cycle were earlier on in um, this current solar cycle 24 matching very closely. So these are the um, winter CETs from the two solar cycles. You see that there was, uh, or it appeared there was a relationship um, generally between the uh, temperatures in the uh, two solar cycles. So cycle 12, by the way, runs from 1878 to 1890. Now we broke that connection uh, there in 2015-2016 uh, because the um, Winter in solar cycle 12 was a cold winter. It's a very mild winter uh, in solar cycle uh, 24, of course, so uh, 15, 16. Um, and then the winter after that, again, we break it. So that's a cold winter again in solar cycle 12. So cycle 24 was a mild winter for 16, uh, 17, uh, the latest winter just gone. So it appears we have broken that connection now between the two solar cycles that we had earlier in the um, solar cycle of uh, the latest um, solar cycle number 24, uh, we've broken that connection. So I haven't got time to go through all of that in today's video. So if you want to know more about that, go back and check out the uh, winter updates because we went into it a lot through the winter updates both this year and the winter 2015 2016 uh, as well. It was a fascinating theory, but it looks like that theory is uh, well and truly broken. In terms of the uh, Gauss Weather Vids Winter Solar Tracker, this is how things are looking. Uh, so again, we are just here with the um, sunspot numbers. So we've trended down a lot actually over the past few days. This is where we was earlier in the week. This is where we are right now. We had a spotless day. I think, uh, earlier, a couple of days ago. Um, so it appears that, again, we are training downwards with uh, solar activity all the time. We know that we're on our way down into uh, solar minimum. So this is where we are in terms of the monthly sunspot numbers. And uh, again, we see that we are down into weak activity. Uh, now the trend line on this chart is moving downwards all the time. This is where we was uh, back at the start of the solar cycle. Of course, when we're coming out of solar minimum, we lift up into solar maximum, which occurs just here. Now we're going down into solar minimum and the latest where we are with solar cycle 24 is uh just there uh and of course all of the charts that you've just uh seen have been sent through to us by our good friend james Ackrell. so big thank you to james for sending all of that analysis and reanalysis through uh to me for today's video uh and of course we'll keep the uh gasworth solar tracker updated over the um next few weeks and months.
Right, this is how things are looking at 10 HPA in terms of the stratospheric temperature over the North Pole. Had another warming a few days ago. There we are. We went up again uh, at the end of February with those stratospheric temperatures. Now we're moving back down again. Uh, so stratospheric temperatures are dropping back down towards the average at 10 HPA. That is uh, one of the top levels of the atmosphere in uh, the stratosphere. At 30 HPA, which is a little bit lower down, we've also had a warming there. So again, we see that black line spiked upwards. <coughs> Excuse me, we see that black line spiked upwards at 30 HPA. And again, it's beginning to cool down. You can't sustain those temperatures, uh, those temperature levels all that long in the stratosphere. So they will cool down. But uh, we know that second half of the winter has seen quite a lot of warming occurring in the stratosphere. We have several goes at warming uh, the temperature up in the stratosphere, albeit we haven't yet had a sudden stratospheric warming. Let's have a look at the forecast from GFS. Well, this is at website metroseal.fr. These are the temperatures in the stratosphere, the temperature forecast in the stratosphere at uh, 10 HPA from the GFS model. That's how we're looking at the moment. So pretty warm in terms of those stratospheric temperatures. But of course, it's the end of the season now. So you would expect those cold temperatures in the stratosphere to be very rapidly uh, diminishing. As we run through, there's very little change going on actually over next week. It does cool down a little bit, probably going down to average with those temperatures in the stratosphere. But nothing overly dramatic taking place. No sign of a sudden stratospheric warming to end uh, the winter, uh, but also no sign of anything particularly cold coming up just near normal with those temperatures in the stratosphere at 10 HPA. Uh, this is the Arctic Oscillation observed and forecast chart. The black line here tells us where we've been with the Arctic Oscillation. The red lines at the end tells us where the Arctic Oscillation is being forecast to go. And uh, we can see that at the moment we're standing around here. So it's still a little bit positive with the Arctic Oscillation. It's going to spike up again over the next few days. But then it is very much trending downwards as we're going through into the middle part of March. Clearly, the um, forecast for the GFS ensembles is to move the Arctic Station down into negative territory. Now, remember, this isn't driving anything, just telling you what the uh, models are forecasting the atmosphere to do uh, over the North Pole. When the Arctic Station is negative, it tells you that you've got high pressure up over the North Pole, and that's normally the route to push cold air out of the Arctic and down into the mid latitude. So that does indicate that there should be some colder air moving out of the pole and into mid latitudes during the middle part of March. The North Atlantic Oscillation is uh, similar. So the black line here tells us where we've been with the North Atlantic Oscillation. The red lines at the end where GFS and Thomas are forecasting North Atlantic Oscillation to go. Uh, through most of this winter, it's been positive with the North Atlantic Oscillation. So we have had um, westerlies uh, being enhanced, if you like. And that's one of the reasons why we've not had a cold winter. This is where we are right now. Uh, and again, we're slightly positive with the North Atlantic Oscillation. So we've got both indexes at the moment in slightly positive positive territory. That's the reason it's unsettled and uh, mild. So as we run through with the North Atlantic Oscillation, it's generally being forecast to say neutral to positive, although there are signs, a few signs that it uh, does dip down into negative territory just here. But overall, it looks like we're staying more or less weakly positive with the North Atlantic Oscillation through to the middle part of March. That will be a problem if we want to get a sustained cold pack, because really to get sustained cold weather, you need both indexes, the Arctic Oscillation and the North Atlantic Oscillation to go negative, and uh, you need the setup in the Atlantic to um, kind of hook up with the setup over the Arctic, and that's how you lock in a cold pattern. Um, you've had the North Atlantic Oscillation still set up the Westerlies, and that's going to fight against any blocking that tries to get going over the uh, North Pole. That's been one of the things that have been occurring throughout the winter. So uh, these are the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. The red line here is a 30-year temperature average. And uh, you can see that at the moment we're in close average, maybe even a little bit below in terms of the upper air temperatures. It's going to turn very mild through the middle part of the week, that period just there. And then after that, we're getting a cold snap coming up at the end of the week. So around Friday, Saturday, I think we get a cold northerly wind, probably bringing wintry showers into the north. What happens after that really is very uncertain. Uh, now, so you see there's a huge amount of scatter here in the GFS ensembles between the warmest and the coldest members. There's something like a 20 degree temperature differential between those warmest 
and coldest members going into the middle part of March, which is that period just there. So, I mean, it's virtually impossible to say what's going to happen here. What we can say is that the GFS is probably trending more, dead to yesterday anyway, probably trending more towards just a cold snap around Friday and Saturday and then turning things mild. But with so much scatter within the GFS ensembles, I think it's practically impossible to say whether we are setting up an extended cold pattern or whether this should be a two-day wonder and then we'll be back into mild westerly conditions as we go through to the middle part of um, uh, middle part of March. I might go through the GFS ensembles for you uh, this evening. So finally have a look at the generic charts. This is the GFS for Thursday. We're dragging up this very mild southwesterly wind. Uh, so it does turn very mild around uh, Thursday. And then on Friday, we start to bring this area of low pressure through. This has been delayed a little bit, pushing this low pressure through. But eventually it does come through by Saturday into sunny next uh, weekend. We do get wind into the north. So that's colder air pushing south. So get a cold snap sometime between Friday and Sunday. Now, the latest is the 6 o'clock run of the GFS. The latest is that it's trying to take this high pressure out to the north and then move it towards Scandinavia um, and go to the middle part of March. So by Tuesday the 14th, we're bringing the wind back in from the east again. That looks pretty cold, really, uh, with uh, high pressure through Scandinavia and those easterly winds bring cold air. Probably some wintry showers in uh, from the east. So that's how we finish up on day 10 cold on Wednesday 15th of March with the winds in from the east. However, just look how different the ECMWF is. So this is very mild air pushing up across the country on Thursday, but still there on Friday. There's that low pressure coming through late Friday, bringing wet and windy weather. Uh, and then that turns the wind into the north very temporarily, uh, but that's cut off within a few hours, really, as the high pressure just reaches up from the southwest. And then it all flattens off. So by Monday the 13th, instead of easterly, such as the um, the uh, GFS is trying to bring in, we're actually bringing in west southwesterly. It's very mild air uh, is pumping up from the Azores. And that mild weather stays with us to the middle part of uh, March, which is Wednesday, 15th of March, day 10, when it still looks mild, unsettled, with bands of wind and rain moving in from off the Atlantic. So you get the idea that uh, it really is very, very uncertain. It is, it, it is even quite uncertain whether we even get the cold snap around Friday or Saturday. Um, I think we will get a push of northerly winds sometime around Friday, Saturday. Uh, but whether that extends out into a prolonged cold spell, whether it's just a few hour wonder, like the ECFF is showing, uh, it really is very uncertain at the moment. So all we can say is keep checking back and we'll keep you posted. So I might go through the GFS ensembles for you tonight uh, individually to see what they are showing. So um, that's it. That's our Sunday roundup this week. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.